Michael Adams has won the London Chess Classic 2023. Fantastic performance for the 52-year-old Englishman. In fact, he's had an amazing year. More on that in a second. Um, I'd like to show you what I think is his most entertaining game. Um, that's his round three game against Mateusz Bartel from Poland. So Adams playing white. It's a Karakhan. Lots of ways you can play this for white, of course. You can protect the pawn, you can exchange. Uh, but Adams plays, I think, the most ambitious move, e5, where white tries to well, basically just get a big space advantage and squash black. So we have this locked pawn structure, a little bit like a French, except instead of the pawn here, this diagonal is open, so first of all, black develops the so-called bad bishop before locking the pawn structure. So this is why this is deemed as, well, quite acceptable for black. Adams plays in a very unpretentious way and simply goes knight f3 and bishop e2 and castles here. You can play in some wild ways with knight c3 and g4. Or you can go h4 as well, but that's not Mickey's style. He likes to just bring his pieces out very steadily and gets castled. And then the fight begins. You know, he's not trying to sort of blow his opponent away from the start. That's not his style at all. It's all very steady. Now, Bartel plays here to my eyes, a, a very unusual move. And it's been played before, but you know, you have to ask yourself, well, how does that contribute to Black's development here? And basically, when you have a locked pawn structure like this, you need to challenge white space advantage. And you can do that in two ways, either with c5 or f6. Now, it's not clear to me which is the best way to go here, but what I do know is, I mean, you don't have to play these moves straight away. You can you can develop first, um, possibly safeguarding the bishop first with h6. But what I do know is that a5 does not contribute to the de development of black's kingside pieces. Now, you're trying to gain a bit of space, I guess. Uh, perhaps you're just waiting to see how white commits, but it's a risky move already. Adams plays a4. Well, as we'll see, uh, apart from blocking that a pawn, uh, this can be a very useful move later. f6. Now, this really does raise the stakes. Because, as I said, it's going to take some time for the king to actually exit the center. In the meantime, the centre is becoming fluid. Now, positionally, it could be rather a good idea to break down this pawn. But there's a lot going on here for black. Black takes on a lot of responsibility. Bishop b3. Again, a very steadily steady move from Mick. Just bring your piece out very carefully. Uh, not trying to blow his opponent off the board. Queen b6. Now that looks like a very brave move to me. You bring the queen out. Uh, I mean, the queen is opposite the bishop. That's one thing. Uh, although it doesn't seem to be an issue at the moment. The queen might want to take here. But I think what's interesting is that Adams doesn't bother protecting that pawn, but instead just brings out a piece. So he calls Black's bluff here. He's saying, okay, take it. This didn't happen. Instead, Bartel uh, took on e5. I mean, let's just have a very quick look. I mean, there's a couple of things you could do. You could go in straight away, although the problem is that the queens get exchanged. Um, and I think with the bishop sitting here, it's sort of difficult for white to make a breakthrough, even though the rook is well placed. Another way of playing, 
It's this. I mean, this one appeals to me. Bishop d3. And then you're ready to play rook b1 and so on. And this certainly gives white decent compensation. It's going to take a very long time for these pieces to actually get into the game. Um, and in the meantime, there can be some nice threats here as well. But it's possible for black to play like that. But I think when Bartel exchanges on e5, it's kind of backing down a bit. So Adams recaptures, an exchange on e5. The queen is threatened. And again, this one wasn't taken, but bishop c5. So some development. Suddenly Bartel got cold feet and decided to bring a piece out. An exchange, knight b3. Not a good idea to take on c2 because then the knight comes to d4 and you attack the bishop and the pawn on e6, so that looks really nice for white. Something like that. So after knight b3, the queen is attacked and it drops back to e7. Now, I think this is a really interesting moment in the game. So white is already castled. Black has yet to castle. It's going to take a move of the knight and then castle. So white has a little bit of time to try and stir things up before black is actually developed properly. So how do you use that? Well, a simple way of playing is queen d2. Attacking this pawn and if b6, then knight d4 is uncomfortable for black. No doubt about that, attacking both these points. It's possible just to give up this pawn here and get castled. I mean, black is pretty solid there. Um, has a nice center, but yeah, white has taken a pawn. So that's an interesting way to play. But Adams didn't go for that. It's really interesting what he found, actually. He gave a check. If bishop g6, then you can exchange damaging those pawns, and that certainly looks very attractive for white. Therefore, g6, and the bishop came all the way back again. So what has white achieved with that? You can see that white threatens g4, attacking the bishop. When the bishop moves, f3 traps the bishop. So that's the threat, g4. And that's a bit uncomfortable for black. h5 is really necessary. I, I mean, you can play g5, but then bishop h5 check again is not great for black. So h5 stops g4, but that's a bit loose. You can see white, uh, excuse me, black's queen side, black's king side, <laughs> no less, has just opened up a little bit. And in this position, Adams plays queen d2. So this is an improved version of the other line, the improved version of playing queen d2 straight away. That queen not only supports the knight attacking a5, it also looks at that h6 square. So it's not easy for black to play knight h6. Well, I mean, you can play it. But you still can't castle after that, because the knight would be attacked by the queen. So it's not so simple for black. Bartel decided to cover that pawn. Now, another simple move. Bishop d3. Okay, it could be a strong defensive piece, so Adams exchanges it off. And, you know... Something like knight e7, knight c5 is actually rather awkward for black because this pawn is vulnerable. So after bishop d3, knight h6. And the queen is looking at that knight. Knight d4. So Adams has certainly used his little lead in development to gain the initiative. And exchanging and... and coming in here as a threat. So queen e7 protects the six pawn. 
And here is where we can see this move is of benefit to white. Rook a3, good move. The rook comes into play. Could be very usefully placed on b3, attacking the b7 pawn. It could also, in some circumstances, swing across to the king side as well. So this is a little bit awkward. If, let's say, king f7, rook b3, you can see that is not so pleasant for black. And also that rook is tied to defending the a5 pawn. I mean, white certainly has some pressure there. After rook a3, Bartel exchanged on d3, rook came across, and then played knight f5. Yeah, that knight was loose. Queen doing a great job on d2, looking in, in both directions. So knight f5, and that was exchanged. A strong piece on f5, so exchange it off. If e takes, then that looks pretty nice. That's a nice pass pawn, protected pass pawn, and yeah, these pawns, there are weak squares all around them. That's not so great. So g takes f5, sort of keeps things together. In this position, black would very much like an exchange of queens. And then that central pawn mass would actually be looking quite good. But the queens are on the board, and that's the problem. c4, Adams wants to open the position. Uh, if that's taken, I'd say the rook would come down here, and that looks pretty strong. So the big question for black is, where do you put your king? Do you leave it in the middle? Do you castle kingside? Do you castle queenside? It's quite, a f quite funny. In this position, my computer wants black to play castles queenside, which kind of looks crazy because of queen takes pawn. In fact, it's not so clear after pawn takes pawn here. Black is still in the game there. It's very unclear. But instead, I think understandably, Bartel played king f7, kind of keeping everything protected. Adams exchanged. Now this is a tough decision. If c takes d5, rook b3, that's really nice pressure here. And the queen still looks at a5, you know, maybe rook b6 later, that's, that's a nice position. So e takes d5, but that certainly looks funny. I mean, these pawns are beautiful, but these pawns, isolated, ragged, not a lot of cover for the kings, looks really nice. Rook e1. Protecting the pawn, and of course if this pawn advances, then that's very uncomfortable for black. And Bartel played an extraordinary move here. I mean, clearly this pawn is a problem. If queen e6, then rook b3, that's not great with pressure. So Bartel played king e6, using the king as a blockader. If the queens were off the board, I would say black has a really healthy position. That king would support a potential advance. With the queens on the board, you just have a funny feeling something's going to go badly wrong here. Rook g3, good move. Because if black challenges, then that can be exchanged. And queen h6, and clearly this is very unpleasant. These pawns are too vulnerable and that pawn can advance. So queen f7, preventing rook g6. Okay, how does white keep going now? Well, one needs to open up the position to try and get at the king. So b4, very logical. h4, hitting the rook. Rook swings across with some pressure here. And if h3, then you can keep the position closed. I think I would have thrown that in with black. You never know, there could be some back rank trick later on, but still, it's still very nice for white. f4 played. Takes, yeah, getting through to b7, rook g8. Careful, 
pressure. Queen b4, great move. Threatening queen d6, as well as queen takes b7. And um, this is tremendous for white. Rook h7, the game finished like this. Check. Rook b7, a nice bit of flash, very nice. So that gets taken. A check. Now there are various things you can do, um, but this is the simplest. Very straightforward. You give a check. It's a simple double attack. So what's the score? Um, Adams is two pawns up. The king is still very poorly placed. Well, it's become poorly placed anyway. So just maintaining the activity is good enough. And the pawn, here we go. The finale. How does white finish things off cleanly? Queen takes rook. And here Bartel resigned because if queen takes queen e7 and that's the end of that. White can get a queen on the next turn. I mean, the only thing that black can do is give up the queen for the pawn, but white has an extra rook, and that is game over. Really smooth game by Michael Adams, and so typical of his style. You know, just creeping forward really nicely. Thought there were some classy moments here, uh, starting with bishop h5 check. Queen d2 is kind of an obvious move, but bishop h5 returning... And then queen d2 was a really nice finesse. And then we had the rook coming into the game beautifully, creeping up to the third rank. Um, and then, yeah, nicely finished at the end, opening up the position with b4. Great stuff. So Michael Adams won the tournament with six points out of nine, ahead of um, Amin Tabatabai on five and a half, and Domraju Gukesh, and Andrei Volokitin on five points. But this was a superb victory for Adams. Uh, he's 52 years old. He played in his trademark, solid, responsible style, and it worked really well. And he has had an amazing year. Um, let me see. He won the Cambridge International. He's won the British and English titles, the World Senior Individual Championship, individual gold in the World Senior Team Championship and now the London Chess Classic. Well done to Mick, absolutely delighted for him. Such uh, yeah, a, a stalwart on the, on the English chess scene, English number one for many, many years and I, I really hope that uh, he continues his fine form. Thanks for watching.